Well, Dan, here we are. What? We have. Who's we? Well. Define who we are here. Well, we. we the two of us. I see what you're saying. The two of us. Yeah, yeah that's. I think yep. it's it's me if it's one of us, and it's we if it's multiple of us, right? Yeah, so no, it's me or us or me and us or us and them. I know, but it'd be weird if I said, "Well, Dan, here us is." Well, it'd be here us are. Here us are. But either, either way, you're fucked, right? Yeah, I just fucked. Um, um I the, the title of today's show is interestingly enough from that little fucking babbling session we just had. How do we know what's real anymore? Yeah. So here we are again. Here we are. How do we, how do we really tell what's real? Like, how are you? I'm curious for you. A lot of people ask me on a regular basis, um, what I'm doing personally to figure, try to figure out what's going on in the world, because there's not a single, I'll, I'll tell you candidly, there's not a single news outlet right now or personality in the news. Mm hmm that I would hear something from them and not immediately think, all right, so what's this, what's the real story? Yeah. Right. I, I can't think of any person like there's a couple of people that I, I think the idea of reporting the news is just gone by the wayside and everybody's just reporting their opinion. So at this point you have to look for people whose opinions are most actively and often affected by reality and facts. Right. If we, if there's no real new, if there's no, like the AP doesn't exist anymore. They're doing editorial pieces now. That's crazy to me. Yeah. The AP used to be a news wire. They just put out facts like, uh, Hitler dead, not brutal dictator slash Nazi Hitler dead, just Hitler dead. That's what they would report yeah. back then. That doesn't sell. That is not the case anymore, obviously. So there's no, no one to turn to. I, I don't know. I just assume people are, are full of shit now, yeah, but to be I, honest. I, uh, totally yeah i mean look I, I think that the news as far as a um as far as using the news as as a um as a fact based source of information right. is out the window um and i think that that happened because now these news organizations have now had they have to compete with big tech in different ways that they you know, to get information, mm -hmm. we can, you know, now everybody with a phone can be a, a reporter now, right? Correct. Basically. So now they're having to compete with that. So for me though, it's kind of like when somebody talks to me and tells me a story, I can usually tell when they're full of shit. Right. I mean, look, it's not, sometimes it's not even being full of shit. You're, you're hearing facts through the lens of someone's experience, right? Well, but, but Typically, no, but, but, but we, not, we, we give too much weight to our own experience. But, I'm not, but not even that, like some things just don't add up. Like everything in the world adds up. Everything is, is a sum of, of some type of equation mm -hmm. of events that occurred to get to that, right? Like there is no situation where, well, that just doesn't add up and we're going to be okay with it, right? right? Like you have to keep finding what piece of that formula that you don't have. So everything does add up. And if it doesn't make sense, then it, then you need to keep searching for the answers to make this make sense. And where I think that the news is wrong is, is, is it's leaving out information that you know on purpose is no different than lying. Right. I mean, if, if there's an abundance of information and you go into it and find the one spot that makes things make sense for your opinion, then you're not really doing news, yeah. right? You're just doing confirmation bias and that's not really a help to anybody. I really think a lot of these center right and center left people need to get together and get rid of this left right paradigm altogether. If I, I wonder what the, what the uh, uh, herd immunity rate would be, I guess for lack of a better phrase for Americans to stop thinking in those polar terms like what what's the right answer to one plus one we know the right answer it's not a political answer no. now there are different political ideologies with regard to how we handle certain issues whether it be war the economy and then specific things down the list obviously that's true there are definitely political differences but there is an answer to every question that's how ans questions and answers work right but I, but I think you I think the nation skewed it when they started skewing what a win was and mm. what a loss was like let's go back to the basics 
you know, we, all this traces back to the basics. So what's a win and what's a loss? Like, well, just because you went out and tried hard that day doesn't mean you didn't lose as well. Correct. You can do right? both. Like and it's important can, to learn that lesson too. It is. But like when you we can, stop, you can do the most you can do physically and still lose. And what happened to accountability? You know what I mean? Like accountable for losses, accountable for failures, right? Like, like th these are all things that, that are causing the results of what we're seeing in America today. So, right. I mean, I, I think that like, so how do you know what's real anymore? I mean, I guess it goes back to your, to your foundation of looking like, it's like, is your GPS off right now searching for signal or do mm. you know your compass? Correct. Do you yeah. know how to look up in, every day? There's a reason why, despite being the most technologically advanced military in the world, the first thing you learn in any fucking branch of the military land is land navigation, right? Absolutely. The very basic how to use fucking magnetism with an with a offset. How to figure use, out where you, not just like how to travel, but where you are, even if you didn't terrain know where you reckoning, were before. Yeah. Uh, as far as looking yeah. at the sun, the yeah. stars, like yeah. the, con the, the, the constants in the world that mm -hmm. aren't going to be, you know, like a map, even, even a compass can be, you know, the declination can be up to eight, can be up to eight and can have I mean, it, more it, than that in some cases. And it can be affected by the familiar. metal you're around or the ground right. you're Anything, on yeah. or how you're holding it. There's all types. But of what's it, the but lesson learned? The lesson learned there is that to go back, we have this tool. Yes. But how are we checking every time we use it to make sure that it's the results from that tool being used are accurate? Absolutely. Like accuracy has got to be the most important thing. So if you, uh, I also have, uh, I wanted to bring this up. I have a problem with the idea of the middle or center, center right or center left or middle right or middle left, or I'm in the middle on these issues. What does that actually mean, right? It just means you won't uh, take a stance. Well, I, I guess maybe it does. I, I understand the, I understand saying that because if you frame things as right versus left, we're human beings, we live in the third dimension, middle is obviously the other choice, right? But it's, that's, a, that's not true. There are plenty of other choices. The the phrase middle or center implies that in every situation, uh, both sides are wrong and that the answer is somewhere in the middle of those two. That is not the case. In yeah. some cases, the left will be right. And, and I mean, when I say the left, I mean classical liberalism, not this bullshit we see today. In some cases, the classical conservative will be right, right? We, we've done this for years. We didn't all of a sudden figure out a bunch of shit about how to govern people in the last couple hundred years. We just started oppressively applying it in a fucking in a in a uh, mission creep kind of way but the middle the saying that the the idea is somewhere in the middle no somebody is right and somebody is wrong and I, you have to be as comfortable with being wrong as you are with being right because I, you'll never be right unless you're comfortable being wrong i mean right? i don't i don't know where but i i don't understand where right has to do with left or right you know what i mean like no it's I don't correct know, versus correct, incorrect, I, don't, I don't know right? how correct you know, obviously it's right, correct, whatever. But yeah, yeah. for this speak, like, I feel like the party should be like this. If you take this, if, if I was holding circles up, this is going to be the Marine diagrams right. here. They should be like this, left and right, and there should only be like just little edges of extreme. Venn diagrams are what you're talking yep, about. Yeah, Venn diagrams, yeah. right? And they should overlap. For the vast majority for of things. For 90% yeah. of us should overlap, right. and there should only but be 10%. Do you think that's a case... Uh, I know he's not a very popular person in mainstream media, but Milo Yiannopoulos actually says some pretty thoughtful things sometimes, even though he does it in a way that makes it difficult to listen to. Him. I'll be frank about that. But um, a couple of things he says, like on immigration, I ask him point blank, oh, what do you think we should do about immigration? Expecting an answer that you would expect from Milo. And the answer was actually, I think we sh it should be some combination of America getting what it needs, like more engineers or doc or whatever the case is. And then, 50% compassion. Like these people need help. Let's bring them and help them. I didn't expect to hear that from him. Well, so, I mean, I, he I mean, makes, he makes good points like that all the time. And one of the points he made is that a lot of these cultures, particularly in Europe that seem to without the same elements that we have, like without the same amount of individual Liberty, without the, without the second amendment, without these things or these things are able to find essentially the same result. And it's because they're homogenous. They, they look, believe and think alike. Well, that's not what America wanted to be. America looked at everywhere else and were like, you know, you guys are all boring. We want somewhere where everybody can come and do be themselves first, and then two, have the infrastructure to succeed without a, an oppressive government telling them that they owe them more money if they succeed or that they get to control their success. That's not how we wanted to be, right? So the premise that we founded this country on isn't uh, necessarily Christian values or white people values or any of that bullshit. 
it, what it actually is, is individual liberty and how to make, how to turn individual liberty into the best possible economic success we could. That is the foundation of America. So that should apply to every single person, right? But I mean, I think. So why are we arguing about <laughs> everybody hates yeah. the goddamn government and this side hates it for this reason and this side hates it for this reason? Like maybe at some point, instead of us being outside a building, yelling at a building, and then we all turn to each other like, oh yeah, fuck you, well fuck you. Maybe we just keep this way and tear that goddamn building down. But don't down. you think that that's what the government's done to us? Of course. I mean, any, I, I say this all the time. I've been saying it for years now. Anytime anybody's trying to divide you, they're trying to conquer you, right? Well, because exactly. that's, that's just basic fucking military strategy. But on the backside of it, we have also been like, we'll let the government take care of us, bail us out instead of just hard work. You know, because there's been an option there. We've taken the, look, our, our society is, is, is where it's at right now because of the results of taking the easy way out too many times. You know, that, that's what it comes down to. I mean, look, all these topics, I, I know I keep saying this in, in a way that people probably like, oh, no, it's more complicated than that. No, it's not. I mean, immigration's a simple, co I mean, all these are simple answers right. to this. Right. Like, that's why, that's why our Constitution is pretty damn simple. Our Constitution's simple. Like it was freedom of speech. Yeah. The right to bear arms. Right. It was wrote in a way that's pretty simple because it's at the basic level. Right. Right. So and that, that, that was intentional, obviously, like, and you, you could see the intent with the culmination of the Bill of Rights, which is the 10th Amendment, which says anything not spelled out here returns to the states. Now, there have been cases where we figured out for better or worse that we need to go a little farther for voting rights, yeah. both for yeah. all men and then for women in the mm. 1920s. We needed to go that far for, uh, for alcohol for some reason. That didn't make sense, did it? Shit. And then we undid that one with another amendment. Yeah. And then the last, I believe, constitutional amendment had to do with the pay of Congress people. Yeah. So I'm not sure how that's really relevant to any of us. Did the American people vote on that? No. Yeah. No. Wow, man. You would that's seem like... That's crazy, like if, it? You'd think that, like... You imagine if the employees of our companies mm. were able to come in and make make their own HR rules and what yeah. their, negotiate their own contracts without... That would really interrupt my ability to apply oppressive rule to them. Yeah, that'd be kind of... And kinda, I want to. That'd I don't, be kind of hard, uh, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would, it would be difficult. Yeah, it's... No, that's stupid, obviously. I mean, the these... The differences in the way we think about thing or a symptom of how we're thinking, not about what we're thinking, right? Like we're thinking from, I understand when a young kid that's impressionable, that's in university gets told how bad it is for everybody else. That should make you feel some kind of way. Yeah. It should make you like when we heard there was danger to our country, the first thing we did was sign up for fucking yeah, war and in, in, yeah. in wartime. Yeah. You know I mean, that's, that's a fucking crazy thing to do it's normal. under any circumstances, but it was normal for us. Now for a lot of these kids, who, who have been raised, I guess, in the, in the self-awareness version of America, they realize that even if you're super happy and things are all going well for you, you're an upper middle class kid that's had no struggle, life can still be pretty difficult. You know what I mean? Because life in general is difficult. It doesn't matter how much success or failure. Look at Kate Spade. She killed herself and there couldn't have been a more successful person. Yeah. A woman in, in, in an entrepreneur fucking role that, that very few women, if any, have ever seen, at least at that level, right? still killed herself. Life can be difficult. So I understand the idea of someone who's trying to figure out their own way is feeling very empathetic about the world and then sees this stuff, but you have to see reality, right? Mm -hmm. Your empathy is not going to change anything. There's an old saying, now is not the time to feel, now is the time to do. These people that are out on the street protesting or the people who are hungry that are homeless, they don't need your empathy. They need food. You know what I mean? The people that are protesting need economic equality. Yeah. So there's no need to protest anymore. And, 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 there's and, things, there's, li there's like literal concrete actions we can take yeah. to solve these problems. But instead we're debating over the method. But if we, but if on we, both sides, but it's if not we solve one side them, or the other. If we solve those problems though. Right. Then there's no more divided. And when there's no more divided, right. there's no more power. Well, I mean, I, I always think this is the, the metaphor, I guess, if you want to call it that, that I always come back to you. How much do I personally think a big pharmaceutical company would pay to keep a cure for cancer off the market. Like a pill you could take that would cure cancer right now. What would they pay or who would they kill? What, 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 how much unethical shit would, would whatever company it is. I don't, I don't know the names of the pharmaceutical companies. I'm not, certainly not going to get sued for naming them right now in this context, but yeah. uh, imagine any of those companies, how, what would they do to stop that from happening? 
I, I think a lot, probably, right? So, so I, yeah, I got you. But I, I, look, we got bigger. My thing is, is if I start going down that rabbit hole of, of probably truth, right? Um, but we don't know. Um, but if I start going down the assumptions of what people are doing to harm America, and if I truly start believing those things, then that means we have to do something. So until we're proven that they're doing that, I think we got, we got to go back to the basics. We got to go back to, it starts in the home. It starts as right. us every day of, of not only exercising our individual liberty, mm -hmm. but educating ourselves on that. It's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like with a gun, like, mm -hmm. right? Like I, I was a sniper. Um, you're an infantryman, yep. right? Um, with that weapon system or any piece of gear that we had, uh, let's just talk about our rifles. We had to know that rifle in and out. We had to know how many feet per second that that bullet moved. Right, yeah. Twenty nine seventy. Twenty nine seventy. Right. A lot we of had people. To, we had to know. We had to know uh, how many rounds it held. We had to know the nomenclature of. We had to know right. that weapon in and out. Right. Yep. We had to educate ourselves on on how to shoot it. We had to practice shooting it. We mm. had to. Well, I mean, in basic training, you carry that weapon around with no magazine in it for three weeks before you ever right, see right? A, a bullet before you round ever. for the first time in your life. Right. But then. Don't you, that, that, that weapon is your, your protection. It's the protection between freedom right. and, and not freedom. It's, it's the protection for you and your friends. It's your protection for your own life. Mm. But it can also be the exact same thing. If you're careless, They can right? kill you right. or your friends. Or, or if your you're careless ones. or malicious. Or either. malicious, right? Right, yeah. So with that, it's the same thing like freedom mm. and democracy. People need to educate themselves on how the system works. Well, and it's on a how privilege, important. right? It's, it, 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 it's not a right. It's a tool. The, the, idea it's a tool. That, the idea that freedom is somehow a human right, that is, the, 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 that there's any human right is nonsense. Well, that, that begs the question, like, a right according to whom exactly? Well, it, you know it, what I mean? It, but, but, because but, people but it was, fight and die for that. That's a privilege. That's but not it was a right. made a right under this nation right like 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 in, in america it was we made say right. that we, we we say that but the the re the the problem with with phrasing it that way is that if you, when you call it a right then people start to expect it and you shouldn't expect it well you should appreciate it those are two very different well, ways to approach that subject well 100 percent. you should understand why but that goes back to educating but, yourself on yeah why. and from our perspective as soldiers and and marines we want we want that to be a right. Yes. Like in my mind, it should be a right. Yeah. But in the, it's just interesting coming from a different point of view. In my mind, it should be a right because that means I'm doing my job. Yep. But for a civilian that's never done that, that should feel like a privilege to them. Well, and I don't know how to make that well, case again. Well, I'm going to tell you. Because we're fighting bullshit wars all the time. Well, it's kind of like. Like people need, as fucked up as it, as it sounds, people need a war they can believe in to reinstall so a little bit of confidence in the U S military and what we do and our, like the fact that we don't give a shit who the fucking president is. Yeah. We don't care about any of that stuff. Yeah. I mean, individually we care, but at large you tell us what to do. we tell us who to defeat and we will go defeat them. Right. 100%. That's it. Well, and, 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 and I, that's all we want. I, I think that, you know, while you're talking about that, it's kind of like I'm seeing these people look on the left and right. I mean, talking about grab it's time. <laughs> grab arms like you know what here's what i'm gonna tell you anybody who's saying it's time or civil war or saying mm. that shit you quote me right now they have never never seen what war looks like yeah they have never i mean there's a couple out there that have but i, I don't know i hold them i don't know i, I mean i, I hold not, them very responsible for how flippantly they've never had their, they've war. never had their teeth kicked in you know yeah. what I mean? Like, like I mean, it's, and, it's definitely a different feeling winning all the time versus taking a couple, a couple of L's, you know? I mean? Exactly. Yeah. So like the, I would tell you this is like it, it, anybody who's seen violence and knows what violence is like, right. Is not asking for violence in our own country right now. Cause that's a door you don't want to open. And then I heard somebody, I posted a post on my uh, Instagram today about this. And I had somebody write, oh, here we go, veterans again, you know, just talking about how they've done all this, but, you know, they're never going to stand up for our country again. Like, motherfucker, like, you don't even, like, it ain't time. Like, we're fine. This country is fine. Like, okay, we got, so let's say Biden's in for the next four years. Right. You got a stalemate, you got a stalemate president. It's, it's stalemate now. It'll be full stalemate. It'll be. It'll be Obama's second term by 2022 because the Republicans will take the House back, right? 100%. So, I mean, so it's it's like, nothing's going to happen no, over the next couple of years. Nothing is going to happen. Like, 
But you got to pay attention, though, right? You, you, I mean, look. This is this is the reason that everybody thinks, and I and I agree with them that Fauci is a bad leader. He's probably not a bad scientist, though, because you do need to change as new information comes in. But he didn't contextualize that enough to people, and I think it was a huge mistake on his part. I think it was a huge mistake on Trump's part to allow it because so much st- instead of instead of Trump being like, "Hey, could you clarify exactly what this means?" Like, yeah. You're telling people that mask right now could be problematic for some folks, but for a lot of folks, it could be helpful. Here's all the data. Try to make a good decision based on the data. That should yeah. have been the, the narrative. Instead, it was one side trying to make a political point and then Fauci making a point that is correct in the time it's said, but is not a ubiquitously correct scientific fact, right? Something that's constantly changing like that, you have to address that fact, and he didn't do it. Not very well anyways. So that's why... We've had, uh, to be honest, it empowered the left to do all these shutdowns. And if you think that all these Democratic governors didn't shut their states down, in, at least in some way, to affect the economy, I, I, just, I think that's well, crazy. Well, just, it, we, we know that politicians are scumbags, man. You really don't think they're doing well, here's, this shit? Here's what I'll tell you to prove it. Hmm? That now if the Democrats are elected, oh, yeah, there's a COVID they're going to open yeah. the country up. There's a COVID cure yeah. <laughs> as of today. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, you know, so... But but my but my piece is back to that is like look it, it it's not our country's fine. Here's the worst case scenario for us as a, as a nation is that a we're going to be divided more, mm. which makes us less um, less effective. It makes us weaker in the eyes of the world, um, and on top of it, it just holds us back. Uh, like it, it's not gonna it's not gonna take us backwards. We're not going backwards. Our, our, our country's too strong to go backwards. Right. Like it's not gonna take us backwards. But what it's going to do is it's not going to it's going to let others catch up to us. Yeah, I mean, it's going to let others close the gap in. Correct. Yeah. On, on what it, we are. And it also I mean, whenever you're projecting strength and shit like that, you limit the amount of attacks that people are, like, if somebody perceives you as weak, they're going to attack you more. It's just the way it is. Um, and, and in that way, you know, we, we it, it's interesting to see how it, things change from a Democratic to a Republican presidency. The yeah. way the world sees us and stuff like there is some level of. I guess dignity that Obama brought back because he wasn't George W. Bush, like pretending to be a cowboy because he's not a cowboy. Let's be real. Yeah. And he's a rich kid from Connecticut. Um, there was some level of dignity he brought back. And as soon as that dignity crossed over the apologetic line, like we're apologizing for all of America, all this, all of a sudden for everything we've done, like, look, yeah, we've had some leaders take us down some bad directions but by and large, there is no one more helpful on the world stage than the United States of America. No, I always say, you know I, I, mean? I always say. And, and that's a good thing. That's not something we should be proud of necessarily. I'm not saying you shouldn't be proud of it, but you should be proud of it in the same way as you're proud of your fucking high school or college when you finally make the varsity team and it's a prestigious school. And you're like, I'm not going to let these fucking people down every single day. The first thing that pops into your head should be, I'm not going to let my fucking family down. I'm not going to let my Mm -hmm. country down today. I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure those two. And we all struggle with it. You're going to have days where you let people down. It happens to everybody and it happens all the time, as a matter of fact. Sometimes if you're going through rough periods or stressful periods, it happens more than you're actually doing the right thing. But you have to fucking find your way back to that stuff because here, the only way you can find your way back is if you know the waypoint. Absolutely. So all Americans, left or right, it doesn't matter. We have to have the same goddamn goal. And the goal should be that America is the strongest country in the world with the most global influence because we know our idea of individual liberty is correct. Well, right? Well, so here, and anybody that wants to sign on to that, fucking you're my ally forever. Yeah. Well, look, I, I think that I think I, I said it last week and I'm going to say it again. I think there's two types of people in, in America, mm-hmm. especially there's. Uh, there's one race that's the, um, you know, mm. that's the uh, uh, human race, and you're either for us or against us. Right. That's it. Like, there's no in betweens. And it's um, and it's a family type situation. So it it's is. like I'm I'm gonna talk a little shit about you, in general, but if you, but if a hurricane's if, hitting you or anybody's coming yeah, to mess with you, but I got also your back. but also if somebody else tries to come after you, yeah. like that's a no go, man. Like but, I'll call my brother a piece of shit all day but when you say it now it's time to fight that's how isn't it weird how that's way the way people's mind works but somehow we've regressed into this me first attitude like typically when we were growing up because it's confrontation i would be a lot more interested in being in a fight that involved 
somebody else than I would have been in a fight that involved myself or my mouth. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? For sure. And I think that's a, a normal human compulsion. I, I wonder why it's changed so much. I mean, because, because, because it's not popular to be in it. Right. Like right. the, 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 rip, the, like conflict is not nobody's comfortable with conflict anymore right. we haven't had to fight for anything in this country right like, it's been a while yeah. it's been a while and so you know i think well, it's been a while since this country had to sacrifice well I, I, I tell people that that when america is strong mm. the world hates us right when america is weak the world is better for it when right. america is weak the world suffers it, i agree with that yeah i mean who if america's with with our relative size and look we're one third the size of China, maybe less. We're one fourth the size of India, maybe less. So we might be one, one fourth to one fifth the size of both of them individually at this point. Russia is a pretty big country and they have a lot of uh, global influence because of their positioning geographically and also because of their deals. And polar with bears. Certain, what's that? And polar bears. Well, I don't know about polar wolves. bears. Uh, I think Coke bought all the and polar wolves bears. too. Yeah, Coke but the wolves, them. yeah, yeah, uh, wolves yeah. But they, sure. they're they're uniquely positioned now. If you, I, I really got to be honest here with these uh, left leaning folks. If you had to choose between China, India, Russia, and the U.S., if any choice even occurs to you other than the U.S., I feel like you're being dishonest with yourself. You're saying it for effect, or you're saying it because you're generally Motion. ignorant and you don't understand the question because. None of those countries come like they, they pale in comparison to the United States. China has a pretty good economy for the people that their economy works for, but everybody else is kind of fucked. They also have the ability to turn on their Internet on and off whenever they feel like it. They can censor you, throw you in jail for whatever they want. Right. India, abjectly poor. Russia is a combination of those two things. So it's like, wh what are we really even talking about right here? Why are we not focused instead of talking about. Uh, with BLM and all these dum dums talking about bringing in Marxist ideology into our country, why are we talking about taking what we know works and making what we know works better and make it work for more people? Because socialism isn't what makes capitalism work for more people. But nobody, but nobody, but nobody wants that, right? Like, like all these people who talk shit about, well, I'd move out if Trump becomes president. How many of them moved? None. None. And I hope everybody like, that said they were going to move out if Biden becomes president fucking leaves. Leaves. See ya. Bye. I don't like, want you process. here. We don't want you here, right? No. Like, I, I, the other part that's making me sick is seeing these these Trump supporters carrying guns to voting sites. Yeah, what is the, what is the deal what, with what that? Is that? Let, let's is do that? First a quick off, let's just be honest. Let's do an election recap right quick because nobody knows what the fuck's going on right now. There's recounts going on in multiple states. There's court it's challenges. Over. Let me just go ahead and say it's over. It's over. Biden won. I'd be surprised to see anything change, and I hope if there is widespread fraud, they find it. Yes. Yes, but, but let's go ahead and say. Let's just say. Biden won. I, I want to address a few of the issues from the election that seem to be widely misunderstood by most people. So Trump winning big early, then losing later when mail-in ballots started to get counted and all this stuff is not in itself very suspicious. I mean, this is how it goes in a, to a Look lesser scale. Well, this is how it goes to a lesser scale every single year. Mm -hmm. The urban areas come in later than the rural areas because they have less votes to count out there. They're, they're more buttoned up. Most people vote in person early in the morning and they turn all that shit in pretty easily. Now, with mail-in ballots, you have to assume that Dems are gonna get a boost from that, right? Yeah. Because they pushed it harder than Republicans did. Republicans were against it, like vote in person. Yeah. So the idea that That's you're, you're, you're looking at, you're looking at this all wrong. You're looking at this from a position that uh, people were voting all day and their votes were getting counted in a row, and that is not the case. All these votes were turned in by sometime around 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. Central, yeah. or I'm sorry, 8 p.m. Eastern or 8 p.m. in whatever time zone it is. For the most part, seven or eight, depending on what it is. All those votes were turned in by then. A lot of them were turned in weeks before then. And then they started counting them all at the same time, right? That's how it worked. It wasn't like there were a bunch of people online in the last 25,000 of them happened to be Joe Biden supporters. Yeah. That would be weird, right? Now, I'm not saying there are some statistical uh, uh, irregularities that raise the eyebrow for sure. There's a lot of dead people that apparently voted. There's these, this Dominion software is all over the place. And it's in every single swing state that exists. And it's, it is very bizarre that every time a mechanical glitch happens, it is in favor of the Democrats. Like that seems, yeah. that seems like it's impossible for that to be the case, yeah, right? For sure. So I don't know what the fuck that's all about, but the idea that Trump was up early in a lot of these states and the Dems came back later, 
that in itself is not suspicious. So I'm not telling you to ignore it. I'm telling you to treat it like a clue, right? It's a clue to something else. Maybe it goes nowhere. Maybe it was just the way it is. And this, this all plays out the way it's playing out right now. Maybe it was a clue for something and we'll find it. Yeah. You got to pay attention for I mean, sure. We, just but don't. Tr- we, we have to trust the, the judicial system. Look, they're going to come in. Yeah. I mean, well, good luck with that. But I mean, then, then okay. Then I'm going to throw back at you, right? Mm-hmm. If you don't trust anything, if you don't trust anything anymore and you don't trust any of our systems or any of our processes, mm-hmm. then what are you doing? That's a good question. I mean, then what are you doing? Right. You have to believe in something. You have to believe in the system at some level. Uh, you're, so you're telling me you think everybody in every system that, that we have pl- in, in place in America mm-hmm. is fucked. No, I think it's more like uh, we think of it as a chain, right? And individual links in the chain can get weak, but other mm-hmm. links make up for it. What it really is, is more like Christmas lights. One of them goes bad on your string and all of them go bad yeah, because but, the, the circuit no longer connects. But now we have it's, whistleblowers. It's I mean, somewhere in between those two yeah. things, right? Not, not every single uh, seditious or malicious act is going to result in an overturned election. That's but, not true. But, but not, there is some level of, of, there's some level of involvement of people with bad intent in an election that can definitely make, because we've been doing I, it. I the United you. States has been doing it all over the world for years now. I, I, I got we, you, We are right? experts at we it. We are the experts at it. But, but here's what I'll tell you is, is if it involves more than one person, doing it and it was planned it'll come out eventually it will come out eventually yeah for sure and, and that that worries me more honestly i don't i don't i people keep asking me who i wanted to win and blah 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 like i voted for trump but because i care more about results than delivery yeah but i understand people who don't like his delivery i get it i, I think it's kind of myopic to vote against him just for that but whatever i mean we're, we're past that now but um man it's I never uh, seen Joe Biden winning. Like, I, I, I never seen it. No, I could see it. I mean, he's he's the guy that both the lo- the right and the left wanted to win, right? Let's be real about that. The establishment, the yeah. RNC and DNC yeah. wanted. I promise you, the RNC wanted yeah. Joe Biden to win more than they wanted Donald Trump to win because now in twenty twenty four they can come back with like, here's our this is this isn't another Donald Trump. That'll be their fucking headline. You mark and see. It's fucking what what day is today? November the 9th of 2020, I'm telling you, in, in 2024, when the election campaigns start in March, you're going to start hearing this isn't another Donald Trump. Everybody will be here. doing everything they can to position themselves anti-Donald Trump and the Republican Party, even the people that are fucking working with him right now. And it's because the establishment hates the fact that that guy acted independently. They hate it so much. I mean, do you, do you think – come on. Do you really – let me ask you this. What information are you getting where you see that dead people have voted? Um, well, I mean, so I've, I've watched all these videos. Basically what people will do is, and it started out with a couple of people who was, it was their family members. Mm-hmm. So they were like, all the voter fraud allegations started getting thrown around and people went onto the websites where you can track to see whether or not your vote was counted or not. And, and most states have these now. And you put in some type of information, the first and last name and birth date of the person or their address with their first, last name and birth date, or maybe yeah. the last four of their social. There's a lot of different ways to, to go about it, but it seems like quite a few people voted who were not alive, like a lot, like thousands of people. But, you know, it's hard. It's easy to see one example. Like you could, you could make a video showing one example of something and then attach all this other information to it. Maybe those aren't true or not, but it definitely happened, and there's a lot of ca- there's like three or four cases that I that I tracked down personally where um, people who had died recently actually requested ballots after their death, received the ballot after their death, filled out the ballot after their death, and then submitted the ballot. At, like every part of the process happened after their fucking date of death. Now there's some talk about maybe these are just cases of mistaken identity with people with similar names, but thousands of them that seems unlikely, right? So we have to follow this lead. We just have to. That's a, that is a good one. This is a good way to look at things. The way where you think that because Trump was up early and then ended up losing, at least according to current counts, is somehow suspicious, that's not true. Focus your energy on shit that you can actually fucking investigate, not stuff that was, should have been obvious to you in the first place. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> but do you think, I mean, do you think, I mean, he didn't just lose one state. We're not talking about, we're not talking about a 2000 you know, whenever it's, um, 
you know, we're not talking about a, a year 2000 of where it's just Florida is going to decide the outcome of this. I mean, it's multiple states. You know what I mean? Like it's it's. I mean, it's over. Like, it's over. Well, yeah, it is uh, multiple states. That's true. But you would expect someone, when they're getting away with something, to expand, too, right? I'm just being devil's avocado here. I mean, and look, if I've we, never if, seen, uh, like, t- to be honest, may- maybe this is a reflection of how I feel, and I'm way off base here. But I've asked a lot of people to explain to me why they were voting for Biden in a sentence that did not include the words Donald or Trump. Yeah. I've asked a lot of people that, and I haven't gotten a single good answer out of any of them that was defensible because their answers are, well, he's going to do this. I'm like, yeah, but he's the one that wrote the crime bill. I'm like, well, he's going to do this. Well, here's him on video denying he's going to end fracking. So what you're, one of you has to be lying yeah. or, or, or misrepresenting the truth or just wrong or, or ignorant of the truth. So, I ask all these questions and I wonder if people are that deluded, honestly, that they could take a worse option because they like them more. That seems weird to me, but then again, it doesn't, right? Because, I mean, everything is a popularity contest these days. That's why reality TV exists on the level it does. Because you need, you need faces and heels. I mean, WWE established that shit in the 70s. After sports have been doing it for years, but you need people to root for, and you need people to root against. Maybe it's maybe it's as simple as that. Well, I mean, I do think I do think that the worst case, if, if, let, let's say I'm the Democrats, right? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm first off, I'm not either one. Um, let's say that I'm the Democrats. I'll tell you the first thing I would do is I would come out and I would say that I won. Mm-hmm. Right. I would have the news organizations. I mean, we we I think we all know that the all the news organizations and the media is in bed with the left. Correct. Yeah. So the one thing I would do is I would come out. You want to talk about charging and making America a hand grenade Mm. is coming out and having the the news report that Biden won these votes, Mm. uh, you know, try to call it as early as they can Mm. and say that he won these votes before this process is out. Well, you're you're establishing a truth at that point. That's what I'm saying is they establish this truth that Biden won. But it's not. It was never true. It's not. And then if you come back and. Donald Trump does now win and right. the judicial system does now find it. You have Donald Trump is going to have to jump on a hand grenade. Yeah, he it seems like he stole the election, but it's the same criticism I was just applying. In every national election year, rural areas report first, urban areas report last. People who vote conservative then by and large statistically would be more statistically likely to vote earlier in the process whether it be uh, standing in line or whatever the fuck or being in an urban area in general before anybody else. That makes sense. So I, that's, it's distribution, right? It's the difference between mean, median, and mode. And it, it brings up another question. So there's this, there's this narrative going around right now that Trump got the most support from the minority community of any president or of any presidential candidate on the right in the last 60 years. Now, technically, according to the way we measure things, that is correct. But is it really correct? Now, we know that minority communities at large, at least the black community, primarily vote Democrat. 90%, give or take, vote Democrat. So they're more, way more likely to have mailed in their ballot, right? So you're going to see a lot less of them in, in the day of voting category. Yeah, I mean. Right? Uh, so, so that's how they determine this. They determine this in exit polling, which is people standing outside of polling centers asking questions. But so I want to know. But is I'm, it really true? I want to know if it's really true if black and brown people, and based on Florida, it seems like brown people for sure, like particularly uh, Cubans, but Latinos in general, even across the Southwest, seem to have voted more for Trump this year than they would have otherwise, just but, based on the the raw data. But I want to know, like, I, I, know th- why. I think one of the biggest mistakes, like you said, the Republicans made in mm-hmm. this election was not getting behind mail-in ballots. Like, after they knew it was going to happen, mm-hmm. I mean, like, what did they think they were going to do? Well, I mean, look, you, it's a it's a strategic play. You're. I feel like they're already building the narrative for, for them. The, the way, the way, yeah, of course, the way CNN played it. It's like a whole guerrilla warfare. The way CNN played it was, we're going to fucking say. Uh, not just CNN, but the left media in general. We're going to say that this That's is the truth. Them. We're going to say that this is the truth over and over and over again. 
for as long as we have. And in the case of Florida and Gore, it was 37 days. It's a long time, right? Mm -hmm. 37 complete days of media coverage saying this person won, this person won, this person won, pretending like they are. Uh, now they're, you're seeing some more news stories where, uh, like the GSA, General uh, Services Administration for the government, isn't uh, allowing Biden to go forward with some of his plans to, to start the transition because the electorate, election, uh, election hasn't been certified yet. But... By and large, the, me the media is trying to push that narrative. It's, this sure. is already over. So that means if it's already over, that means if anything changes, somebody did something to change it. The <clears> presumption <throat> is that somebody cheated to change it, right? Or they used whatever to change it. Now, Whatever happened to losing? Whatever happened to yeah. just losing? Republicans did the same thing, though. Well, I, I, like the well, the reason you. to call into question the mail-in ballot process, aside from the inherent risk <clears throat> in mailing in ballots, and we're seeing them now. Like we're definitely, There's definitely a lot of cases of voter fraud with these mail-in <laughs> ballots. Um, and you, you should expect that, by the way. I mean, so there's voter Walmart, fraud every single election, but we had, f I think, five times more mail-in ballots this year I, than we have in any other every year. Every retail business that yep. lets the public come in it right. and, and buy shit, mm -hmm. they put in a level of theft and a level of, of, of right. you know, loss due to people stealing. It's going to happen. Yeah, it's called breakage. It, it, there's there's going to be a level of cheating in our system. It's just part of it, right? Or spillage, whatever spillage, you want to call it. Whatever you want to call it right? Um, well, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you where there is no spillage at. Is ghost bed? Ghost I mean, you can beds. You can spill your seed on a ghost bed. I know yeah, that. I guess you can, can't you? Using biblical um, phrases over here. You know, well, so ghost bed. They've got been, a new deal going on, dude. They do, and they've got a, they are, they've been longtime supporters of Drinking Bros, and, and now the they came in over. General, and yeah. the military in general. Yeah. They've came over to support um, the American Party podcast. Mm. Um, they, i tell you what I think is probably the coolest part about ghost beds, not only do they have ghost bed? I keep saying it wrong. You say multiple. Um, well, you can buy two at a time. You can buy two at a time. Want. But, uh, you know, just how much they support our first responders. They support teachers. Anyone who's out there making this country turn, who are the cogs, the, the main cogs in the wheel, uh, ghost bed supports them. Uh, I also love, love the feature of their cooling technology that they have, not only for their mattresses, but for their pillowcases as well. Really cool. If you're a fat ass like me, um, you get hot whenever you're sleeping at night and it's uncomfortable and wakes you up and ghost bed helps with that uh ghost bed's doing a 30 percent off site wide if you order a mattress or a bundle uh they're gonna do throw in two free pillows too go to ghostbed.com uh forward slash drinking bros starts uh now uh ghost bed bundles the number one seller is uh they also have a mattress plus an adjustable base, so you can just sit there and push your remote. Yeah, do whatever. Yeah, I've got uh, I've got the King with two twin because we adjust at the same time. But if you want, you can get two twins side by side. Then there's a cover that goes over it. And you can adjust independently. But I feel like it would be I mean, weird. What to if you sleep get your leg? Different. What if you get your leg caught up in that middle right there when you're? You know what I mean? No, I don't know what you mean. No. But I'm saying like if you have two beds there, like mm -hmm. there's that gap. You know, you get your foot caught in a gap in there when, you know, you're, you're trying to get some traction. You're, you're no, that's no, dude. No? Well, I mean, if you needed the traction, yeah, use it. But yeah, you can, it also vibrates. If, oh. if we're going down that road, let's just Whoa. say that the fucking bed vibrates. It too. does. You don't even have to put a quarter inside of it. It does. Yeah. It vibrates. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Big time. You wouldn't even need a girlfriend. Um, they also have sheets and pillows that are 30% off too. If you want to go check them out, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. And they have financing 0% down. Um, how many, 36 months, 36 months pay as you go, which is basically like 35, I mean, 50 bucks a month. Yeah, Less it's, than 50 it's, bucks not a month. Even, it's not even that. Yeah. And, and you, it's 30% off site wide. And with the, if you order a mattress or a bundle of any kind, you're getting two free pillows with that. And you like can try it out for 101 nights yeah. for free. It's the best company in the world. Try it back 101 nights, send it back. And it has a, what, 30 year or 20 year? 20, 20 year. 20, 20, 20 year warranty. Yeah. Who the hell is going to sleep in the same bed for 20 years? Uh, so Ghost bed. Ghost bed. Sleepers, yeah, I guess. Sleeping it forever. So go check them out. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Well, Dan. Um, you know, with this election, now you got uh, Biden coming out, um, which, look, I want to say this, 
I, I want to let's let's. I think the biggest mistake that the Republicans can make now going forward for 2024 mm. is if we don't just say, hey, look, we lost. After, after the judicial system, after the system plays out and right. says that, look, <clears throat> yeah, within good, um, within, you know, with, with confidence, we can say that, that you know, uh, Joe Biden is our president. Um, Trump needs to concede as soon as that happens with good faith. And then he needs to let the transition go over. And the Republicans need to say, hey, look, we lost. But now it's time for us to um, to just focus back on the country, right? Right. Uh, we don't need to drag this out like the Democrats did the last four years. Um, and well, I mean, look, it's going to happen, though, right? There's no way to fucking not do it at this point. The it <laughs> we, We've become so entrenched now. You, you absolutely know what to expect these days. If... Um, and I think the left knows that too. I think they know what's going on because two of the more popular people from the different wings of the party, right? Two women, AOC from the very far left wing of the party uh, decided she was going to get out in public and make sure we start creating lists of people that supported Trump during his time in office so we can hold them accountable later, whatever the fuck that means. I mean, I don't know who holds lit our, our keeps lists of political opponents in order to get retribution against them. But that doesn't sound great. You know what I mean? It definitely doesn't sound very American. And the other side, you have uh, Michelle Obama, who uh, essentially called anybody that that voted for Trump in this election, which is 71 million fucking people, liars, haters, uh, well, hate AOC's talking hate, about quitting, hate filled people who want chaos and division and all this stuff like that's this whole I thought they learned the lesson. I would hope they have learned the lesson from the deplorable comment. And they obviously didn't because two of their biggest people, AOC, right? And then fucking uh, Michelle Obama from the other side, from the establishment wing of the party, both came out and immediately talked mad shit to Republicans while everybody else in the, in the party yeah, but, but is asking for unification. But, you, do you really think that's the way to do it? That's but don't forget, happen. Barack Obama's divided us as much as anybody did, right? For sure, yeah. I mean, so, so don't forget, and AOC has been damn, damn near on it, right? Well, she um, wants to divide everybody into categories but, of one. But AOC is talking about, talking about quitting now. She's talking about right. not running for re-election. Give me a break. Which is a good sign. I mean, l let's just take it for where it's at. Like, we, when we, do people give up power that they've, they've gotten? Yeah, I mean, it's look, not very, we especially for a megalomaniac like that. We can only unlikely. hope, right? Yeah. Um, but I, I'm with you, right? Like, how, how do we, but, but somebody at some point has to stop the merry-go-round. Right. At some point, uh, and, and, and I think I if mean, it anybody, was Nelson Mandela back in the day, right? I think if anybody's going to do it, it's going to be us. I think not us. I mean, I'm not saying us, but I think it, right. it, it's. I think if if we have an opportunity to stop the merry-go-round or to 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 slow it down a little bit, this this divide, mm -hmm. it's right now. Yeah, I mean, look, there's something called traction and uh, in business where the concept is you get your small business moving. It's very difficult to get this big rock moving in the first place but little nudges here and there can keep it moving, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So to get something moving in the beginning takes a lot of effort. And it, I guess it just depends on whether or not the American public is, like I see half of the country right now, a little bit more than half, celebrating this election season because it worked out in their favor, so they think. But we all lost this year because we, we got farther apart. You know what I mean? I mean every, been, every time that happens, we lose. It, it may not. We've been losing for 12 years. It may not seem like we're losing at the time, um, but we are losing because we're getting farther apart from each other. And um, I, I, don't but, know, I, don't know what, I don't know what I would say to a conservative right now, like how you should act right now. It's very hard to tell somebody to, be, uh, to, to keep their composure when people are calling them racist to their face. It's difficult to ask that of somebody. It's difficult. I mean, man, have it's you, you walked the streets? Haven't you walked the streets where people sit here and they sure, call yeah. you shitheads? For sure. People you're trying to defend, yeah, yeah. you know, for, for you missing your family. You're fighting a, a war for them. Right. You know, losing your friends. But it takes for exceptional their, people to be able to do that. And most well, people it, just aren't exceptional. Well, this, right? that's, you know what? Then that's going to be the deciding factor of if we deserve the democracy and mm -hmm. the freedom that we have is if we, if we can't be exceptional people, yeah. then we don't deserve the freedom. Yeah, I mean that's true. It is. You you the idea that we don't have to earn this every single day is is uh nothing more than I, an idea. Yeah, it's I I really feel like in in 
every relationship you have, whether it's your personal relationships at home with your friends, your coworkers, or, or whatever the case is, but it, particularly with your country, you got to earn that every single day. Like a lot, a lot, a lot went into this. A lot of people who are out there right now, you know, watching this and who are focused on just throwing, you know, yelling and getting upset at the peanut gallery that we see mm. right now. You know, what I got to ask you is, is what did you do today to earn your freedom today? Yeah. What did you do today to make this country a little bit better? What did you have to go? I'm not talking about I'm not talking about something that you do normally. What did you go out of your way and set down your own personal beliefs to make this country a little bit better? What, what is it? If you can't say anything, then guess what? Then you don't have the right to bitch. You don't have the right to throw, uh, you know, rocks at the glass house. When you live in a glass house at other people who are living their way, you don't have a right to get on social media and go bitch at people. If you haven't, um, if you haven't done something today to make somebody's life a little bit better other than your own and other than your family's, what have you done? Right. Right. Isn't that, isn't that personal liberty? Isn't that, yeah. isn't that? Well, I mean, look, you can, individual liberty, like you said before with democracy is, is, uh, it is a tool to be used and we decide individually tool. how we're going to use it. Now, the fact that our individual liberty has regressed to the point of just dumb group think and and weakness maybe does me, maybe it does say that we don't deserve it i don't know but it, i i don't i don't want to accept that because our, it's it becomes a real problem if we let that our go. personal liberty has regressed or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. gone backwards well i think personal liberty um, regresses as personal responsibility does i think but, there's a definite definite causal effect between those but two i'm things. asking you you know if you feel like you're personal liberty liberty has been you know infringed on mm -hmm. or whatever or you've lost some of it what have you done um what how much effort have you put into your personal liberty right i mean what, i what, guess it's like going to the gym right like yeah, you yeah. stop going to the gym and stop working out stop educating yourself and stop watching what you eat mm -hmm. and stop you know getting on the fads and stop being consistent you start getting out of shape yeah i mean but so what have you done for your personal liberty how, how much have you educated yourself on yeah yeah that's a good i would that leads into a good question um what is it that you can do exactly to work out that muscle before we get to that let's get to uh roman speaking of working out muscles oh you talk about a muscle that's a love muscle is your dick a muscle i don't know yes it's all muscle oh shit yeah oh, i'm trying to flex it right now um so obviously you don't want to fucking go <laughs> you to a doctor. Flex much. No, it's not much. Yeah. It, it's men minimal effort. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't want to go to a doctor anymore ever. We don't do anything in person anymore, right? No. Like we we had uh, Nick DiPaolo on the on Drinker Bros this week. He's doing shows in Vegas. They're all. I mean, there's people there, but the vast majority of people are just virtual now. Um, why waste your time going into a doctor for any of these issues and have to deal with the embarrassment or whatever the fuck else it is? Uh, you know trying to make up excuses for why shit doesn't work. Just talk to somebody in a chat room on the internet, basically yeah. tell them what's up. They're a real doctor. They will tell you what about Roman ED can help your dick work. Right. Dick work. Right. Is a good part. It's a big part of being happy as a man for your dick to work properly. You know what I mean? Yeah, it really is. So with Roman, does yours get, work right? Yes, it yeah. does. Cool. Great. But I still take it recreationally. Uh, awesome. With Roman, you can get a free evaluation online. And, uh, then you talk to, like I said, you get, you talk to an actual doctor. It's not yeah. like, it's not like you're fucking going into a motel six somewhere in Florida yeah. and getting concrete injected into your ass. These are real doctors. Obviously they had to be concrete? licensed. Yeah. You didn't hear about that story. Women were getting, uh, butt injections, but instead of the oil, it was concrete concrete. Yeah. And fix it flat. I think it was one of them too. It was crazy. Anyways, you get free two day shipping with these guys. And they'll dial you in on the medicine, and it's fucking dope. Go to GetRoman.com slash American, because nothing is more American than a boner, I think. Are you dialed in on it? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Every time, yeah. 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 Uh, go to GetRoman.com slash American. get $15 off your first order, uh, and then obviously the free online visits and free two-day shipping on all that. GetRoman.com slash American. If you don't know how to spell American, listen to the wrong show. The facts. Because it's in the name of the show. I'm just saying you could look up. I'm not saying you have to know 
how to spell that word. I'm just saying. I'll, I'll tell you this. It's right in front of you. I'll tell you this. If, if, um, if more people, if they just changed up two things in their life, sleep, slept on a ghost bed mm -hmm. and took Roman. Yeah. I mean, shit. I'm telling you something right now. Like this bitching. It'll definitely improve your life. Yeah. Both of those things. A lot yeah. of this bitching would go out of the, out of the door. Um, so, man, I, so what do we do here? What do we do in 2024? What do we do in the years leading up to that? Because I understand, I understand the people who are worried about the creep of socialism because it does creep. You can't introduce that all at once because it's a bad idea. But if you introduce individual elements of a bad idea over time, then you can build whatever sandwich you want. Man, right? Yes. Like if you like tuna and olives and you like fucking uh, chipotle sauce, that stuff doesn't really go together. It sounds disgusting, right? But if you introduce those things individually over the course of several years or decades, then you end up with all those same ingredients and you can do whatever the fuck you want at that point, right? That's what the government does. They're not playing the short game. They're playing the long game. You got to really be on your toes for these assholes. Um, that's why I don't trust any politician, no matter what level they're at. I actually got asked, this is funny, I got asked if you and I run for president in 2024, should people trust us? Since we don't trust any politician, the answer is no. No. You should trust only what you can verify. Yeah. That's where the phrase trust but verify came from. Absolutely. Uh, why, why you would put your trust at that level in another human being is beyond me. Like the only thing you can put your trust in is the idea itself. The idea can be trusted because the idea is the idea. It's one plus one equals two. There's, there's no, there's no uh, flex from that. It just is what it is. That's how you can trust something. You know what your address is. You can put your address into any GPS in the world and end up at your house. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think that, I think that, um, yeah, d should you trust us? No, but what, what you can do is you can watch us and, you know, just just hold us accountable to what we say mm. like that that's where trust is built trust is built through accountability right yeah <laughs> because i mean it, it's everybody wants to know everybody else is on the same page and that, it's a good way it's a very uh, it, it's a, a very easily distinguishable way that someone is actually committed if they're putting effort into something yeah right yeah i mean look and 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 i think the the first the first place you should start with knowing that that you can't trust somebody mm. um, is if that person is never wrong. Right, yeah. If they are always yeah. right and never wrong and they always blame everyone else, that is the number one sign that that person cannot be trusted. Yeah, and it's, you know, it is what it is. Some people demonstrate their acceptance of being wrong in different ways. Some people have a hard time with that for a variety of reasons, but at large, when it happens, definitely a big problem. Uh, but, but here's what I'll say. We, won't, we will never... Let, let me say this up front. Mm -hmm. As long as, as long as we have men and women and people in a free, first off us as a free country, we will never have to worry about socialism. No, it'll, it'll, it'll I mean, never. Even, even, even in California. Yeah. Look week, at that. They tried the state legislature tried to put up what, what would uh, uh, essentially be uh, full on. Uh, uh, well, they wanted to remove, the government's uh, ban on looking at race, gender, et cetera, for government positions. The reason that ban was put in place is to prevent affirmative action. Even in California, like 60% of people said, no, we're not doing that. Yep. So, I mean, you can say what you want to say about the tide of America right now, and that's kind of our next topic. Like, how bad is it really in America right now? Even there in California, which would you, would you would not expect that. They're still looking at stuff like, no, we can't, we still can't do that. So there is still some line in the sand. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm telling you, like, just sit back. We're, we're going to be fine. It's just four years. Mm -hmm. We're going to be, we've been in worse positions. Yeah, I mean, um, for sure, Joe Biden's not going to be the worst president we've no, ever had if he indeed not. becomes president. I mean, I do worry about the fact that it seems like the DNC really calculated to have Kamala Harris involved in this somehow because nobody likes her. 
on either side. Nobody likes her. Yep. And somehow, even with her on the ticket, they still won despite Biden's shortcomings. That's really bizarre to me. Man, I look, I, I think, like, look, we just don't need to take an aspirin for a headache we don't have yet, right? Like, look, well, I, I, mean, I, got, yeah. I, got, I got he might be president, for but sure, I'm just saying, like, you, we don't, like, like, well, let's just, let's talk about China invading us tomorrow, right? For like, sure, yeah. like, we can sit here and what if it all day. We, we can, let's, but let's, this, I mean, you have to also listen to what people say. When, no, I, I, when he says he's going to fucking end fossil fuels in this country in a matter I, of time that is not I mean, I agree. To I agree that. with you, but maybe he'll get up there and let's hope that, that he puts some people in place that educate him on this a little bit more, right? I mean, I don't listen to anything a president says that they're going to do outside of their fucking well, two and a half to four year legislative window. And that's my point is, is like, how do, how do you decide if you're not going to believe if you're not going to believe the good things he might say he's going to mm. do, then how do you believe the bad things, right? Like you just, right. you can't pick and choose. And so my point is, is that, look, if, if I think us as America, Americans, mm. first off, there's two people, two people are not, this is why democracy is the best. Mm. Two people who are put in place are not going to change the United States of America. It's not going to happen. If the American people don't get behind it, this, that's why this, that's, guess what? That's why we're not British. Right. Right. Like mm -hmm. this is why we are the greatest country on the face of the planet. This is why nobody wants to fuck with us because it's not our government. It's not necessarily our military power. Yeah. It's, it's we, the people. And I think that, I think that, you know, it's kind of like if you give someone freedom, they never want to lose it. Right. And that's yeah. the one common thing that we as Americans all have, whether you're left, right, whether you're even Antifa, all of them, mm. all of them. Like I, mean, I hate they, I, they just feel oppressed by something that isn't really oppressive, but, but, but it's not but, the, the, the feeling and the reaction are the same. But here's what I'll tell you is like, if you felt for, I mean, I think they're, they have a severe, severely fucked up view of what life should be, yeah. but for whatever reason, because of their, <laughs> because of whatever they've been taught, they feel like they're oppressed today. But, but he, oppressed people act that way. That's the way they act, right? But here's the com but here's the common denominator that all mm. of us, no matter how many things or beliefs we can't agree on. Right. Here's the one thing that when we get toe to toe, and we've seen somebody that that we can't negotiate with on this. Right. Yeah. When you get toe to toe they're not going to pull a gun and kill you for their cause because right. they don't want to lose their freedom and go to jail and risk Correct. the rest of their yeah, life. Yeah. Right. Yep. So I haven't seen a cause that anybody believes in enough to go out and start doing that inside the United States of America. Now let's go to Iraq where the Sunnis and Shiites are. Let's go over right. to the, you know, to, to the Kurds or let's go down to Syria where they're having a civil war, where mm -hmm. they're killing each other inside their own countries. W let's go to uh, Afghanistan and, and Iraq, but I keep talking about them, but like, where people are willing to strap bombs to their chest and walk in a street of their own people and blow them up. Right. Right. We're nowhere near there. No, we're not even close. I mean, so, so that's, those are the causes when you start seeing people willing to give up their individual freedom. Right. For a cause. That's when you know you got one that they believe in. Let me tell mm -hmm. you something. They still believe in this cause of democracy so much and more than their cause, that, that their personal, own personal cause? I mean, you can see it because uh, the most people voted this year of any other election that's ever happened. Now, exactly, we'll see what level, if any, of irregularities there were, but definitely there, about nine, so far, I think there's still plenty of ballots to be counted at this point, but so far about nine million more people voted this year than they did in 2016. And, don't, and, can't, and how do you not walk away from even this election? It didn't turn out, like, let's say it didn't, let's, let's say you are a Republican and it didn't turn out the way you mm -hmm. wanted it. How do you not see it as a positive that you had more people involved in the election than ever? Well, I mean, I guess you have to judge the people and by judging the people you got to judge it doesn't matter it's the people the flow of information it, right it, like now that's it now the, it's a the tech company thing is a big deal it is and it's something that definitely swayed the tide of this election and it's something that needs to be addressed not for that reason but because no nothing nothing outside of the control of the of the individual people in america should have that much power but 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 what if this what if this is the first stance of waking people up to take a stance on a cause? Maybe. I mean, what, what if the, it what has if it to is? happen to both sides, though. So the, the other some, somehow tech companies would have to obstruct a leftist or something from getting into office for them to feel what conservatives are feeling. No, right now. no. It, but it's, it's on our government. It's on the Senate. It's on the House. It's on our congressmen, the people who make these laws to mm -hmm. hold these tech companies accountable. That's for, not going to happen. Dude. It has to. It's not going to happen. No, it has to. With a Democratic House, it's not going to happen. Like, what, what? why would they go after them now? I mean, 
it's because it's the right thing to do. And at some point, at, so, at some point though, at some point, at some point, now you see the tides turn. At some point, they're going to have something they don't like that they'll have to go after them. Maybe, yeah. There's no, th- they, be, haven't, they haven't been in a situation where they didn't want to go after them. Right, but we've been seeing that about the media for a long time too, and the media has gone consistently left Mainstream media is obsolete in 10 years. For sure, yeah. But that doesn't mean they won't pivot to another, uh, you know, area. Well, they are. They're all trying to go over to tech. They're right. all trying. I mean, yeah, they are. They're all trying to stream. I mean, and there's nothing more powerful in the country right now than, than the big tech companies. No. And uh, that should not be the case. It should not nothing be the case. Nothing should ever be more. Nothing should ever be more powerful than the, the will of the people. And certainly not uh, outside of their grasp. Like the average individual, even at large, there's no such thing as a na- nationwide ballot measure to tell big company, big tech companies to get fucked. That doesn't even exist. The infrastructure for that doesn't even exist. Well, but either way, guess, guess who's using it, big tech? Well, everybody. The will of the frankly. people. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but there's, there's no way it's a public utility at this point. Like you lose your ability, especially if you're, if you're an individual for sure, but if you're a small business, if you're not operating on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that, you're, you're going to be confined to your local business and that's it forever. You'll start, I mean, but if, if, if there's another platform that comes up and people use it. Right. But that platform will just get taken advantage of immediately too. Right. I mean, it's. That, unless it, we that, get, unless we get on it. Well, it's when, when you say we, you got to change the way fucking people think about this shit. People will accept a certain level of unethical behavior provided that it leads to an end that they agree with. We either have to decide that that's okay and we're going to play a dirty game. And the results are going to be dirty, or you have to, uh, at, at large, agree that we're not going to fucking have anything adulter our, adulterate our fucking electoral process. Well, that's going to have to be a, a, a bipartisan yeah. deal. Good luck with that. Uh, so, I guess in conclusion today, what I wanted to ask you is, what, what's the most surprising thing you've seen in the election cycle so far? I mean, it's not technically it's not over yet, but what's what's the most surprising thing you've seen? Um. I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, honestly, like, I will say this: like, I, I, I voted for Donald Trump, mm. um, just because I, I don't like Kamala Harris. Right. Um, I voted for Donald Trump, um, but I'm, I'm gonna say this: that like, I, I don't like either one of them, mm. but I do feel like a sense of, like, just pressure gone that hopefully this shit of emotionally charged like person, I mean, you talk about the most intimate position, Mm. the most intimate position inside of, of our government is the president. The president is on your TV, in your living room, in your kitchen, in your bedroom. He's everywhere. And to have somebody so emotionally charged, so polarizing, it, it, it'll be nice to hopefully have somebody, you know, uh, not get in the weeds with everybody and and, right. and and just troll everybody, right? Like, yeah, it's entertaining, mm. but like when it's a TV show, but when you're when it's your livelihood riding on it, and the future of your children riding on this, it's not it's not entertaining. Yeah, it's like it's like walking in with your banker and your banker making jokes about your retirement fund. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is, uh, was a bit tedious with Trump. It was. It was just, it was everything. Like, he, he wanted to argue yeah. everything. And I got, look, did he get a fair shake? No. Not no. at all, no. But he knew what he was getting when he jumped into it. Maybe. I don't know if anybody knows what they're really getting into with that one. But, yeah, I mean, there's, there's definitely a presumption that everybody was going to be against him. And I feel like... Uh, I do think Donald Trump's probably one of the most patriotic men ever seems like it yeah i mean if he, i think donald trump at 30 percent, donald trump would probably be a really good president yeah but that's not donald something trump. he can accomplish so it is what it is right yep. um, what do you think i mean what do you what's the most surprising piece of the election for you to be honest the most surprising piece and i haven't done the research i haven't finished rather the research on this yet but i think the gap between the when i say gap i mean the total amount of votes from Senate races around the country don't match the total amount of votes from pres- the presidential race. Meaning, in a lot of places, Biden got way more votes than his senatorial counterpart as a Democrat in that state. And 
the votes weren't made up on the Republican side. Those votes didn't exist. So it's like 20, 70, 120,000 votes that Biden got that the, sen- the number one Senate candidate in that state did not get. Yeah. That is really bizarre to me. Yeah, I mean, you know I, I, mean? I think it's But just this t- is a different electoral cycle, a lot of different ballot collection methods. It doesn't necessarily mean there's malicious intent, but it does seem like some bad shit went down. Man, I I just, mean, just I, like I, a, none of this passes the smell test for me. I just I, think I, I just feel think, like there's a lot of I feel like there's a lot of voter fraud. I don't know if there's enough to swing an election or anything, but I feel like the the, the, the running logic has been over the last ten years, like oh we did this big study and it was only like fucking fourteen cases nationwide. Okay, cool, but it seems like that's not the case this year I, for I just, whatever reason. I just think that like I think you can't underestimate the. Um, emotional exhaustion mm. that this administration has placed on this nation. Yeah, maybe maybe people are just like yeah. done. Yeah, like hey, I'm going to vote for I'm going to vote for Republicans to make the main decisions. Right. But as far as the person who's going to represent and be the mouthpiece of this country, right. like I don't want this. <clears throat> but in this case, that wasn't true. So there wasn't there wasn't a bunch of votes for Biden that went to Republican senators. There was just missing votes. There's people that only, they, they took their ballot, only voted for Biden and turned them well, in. Well, you can't just do that. You can do whatever you want. You can vote or not vote for whatever you want. Yeah, I mean, that would but be. But that, that's kind of weird, and we've seen a lot of weird videos. Again, it's hard is, to know what's true Yeah, I mean, you've seen those one videos of where people were like, just like that one woman's like feeling, but you don't, but you never, how do you confirm, like, how, how do you, how do you confirm that these are I don't real know. videos? I don't know. I mean, I guess having a, su- a system in place before the goddamn election happens where you can confirm that everybody is voting is eligible to vote. Yeah. And is that person. I mean, that you, seems you have pretty to show reasonable. your ID. I mean, you have to have a. Yeah. But I guess it not seems like I've, I've heard all these arguments about voter ID laws like, oh, it's racist because a lot of black people don't have IDs. So fucking give them IDs then. Does it cost more or less? to give people identification than it does to have elections swayed because of fraud. And I'm not talking about dollars. Like it costs the country more when there's not enough confidence in the voting process. Less people will vote. Less people will end up being represented in that case. That's a bad deal for everyone. I mean, but, but, but either like, make it impregnable. That but how system can you should live not, a life it should without be an ID. beyond reproach. How, no, hold on. How can you live a life without an ID? Well, there's a lot of elderly folk. There's a lot of people that have expired IDs and you can't use those to vote, right? In COVID times, it's even more difficult. I made an, uh, an appointment to get my fucking Texas driver's license from after moving to North if Carolina. You my appointment vote, is in if February. You, if you want to vote, but, but you can print it off online. You can print off I, your ID. No. Yeah, you, you can't get a new ID here. Your Texas driver's license. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, that's you what can, I'm saying. Yeah, you can... You can get an ID. Like, yeah, you, you can, can get an ID to vote, for sure. You can get an ID to vote. But I have the knowledge of that and a computer where I can print it and it doesn't cost me money to drive somewhere. You know what I mean? Like we, well, that we, goes back to the point we take of, these guess things, what? We guess take what? these things for granted. That goes back to the point of if you want to use your tool of voting, right? you need to do what it takes to be able to vote. The same way for if sure. I want to buy a gun, I need to do the steps and take the proper steps to use that tool of a gun and purchase it, right? right. Like this is just, it can't be handed to you this is part of America. Right, but I mean, so the Supreme Court has ruled time and time again on behalf of people who have been disenfranchised from the vote, whether it be poll taxes or literacy tests or whatever the fuck else. Any, any kind of willful impediment to people voting yes. should be dealt with. 100%. And it's, if part of that culture is that we don't get IDs for this reason but or that reason But do you think that's enough whatever, people to sway an entire election? Well, I mean, honestly, no, because it would require such a historic. Do you think? I mean, how many people towards Republicans for black, the black community that no, I, I don't think it would. I mean, how many be people deal, no. do you think? Like, how many people do you think don't have IDs? Right. Can't read. All these things together. I mean, how many people are you thinking? I don't percentage even, of America. I don't know what the literacy rate in America is actually. I would hope it would be somewhere in the fucking nineties, but who the fuck knows? What is it? What's well, let's the just check it out. Rate? Let's just end it on this before. Let's see. The literacy rate is ninety nine percent here. Oh, so, okay. So you're talking one percent. Right. You're but talking one percent. But th- that's an old. The the literacy test is from way back in the day. The poll tax is from way back. Well, in let me the ask day. you this: How many people you think don't have a damn phone? 
don't have an iPhone or don't have a, some type of cellular device. Yeah, I would say not many. Okay, Probably, so guess right? what? If you got a cellular device, you can go figure out how to get an ID and vote. I would hope so, right? I mean, that, that, that's you my would, point. You would hope so. How many people here? How many people in in the nation? Yeah, yeah no, that's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm telling you, how many people do you think? How do you live life, and you don't? People get around like I've known people from my hometown who the you know the older generation who did, right. didn't read things like that. These days, though, <laughs> come on. I mean, I don't know how you get. I I can I can understand if you lived in Kentucky in the fucking eighties and nineties and you yeah. didn't have an ID, you can definitely get away with that. If you, I mean, it wouldn't even matter. If you, if you, if you, yeah, no, it wouldn't no. even matter. It doesn't matter. But it, pe- it, people need, we, we need to do both of those things. We need to make sure people are motivated to vote, which means making sure there's confidence in the system and that it's above board and that people have some clarity on what the fuck's going on. And we need to make sure also, despite being motivated, that they're able. Absolutely. That nothing's stopping them. That, that's real simple here. And I hope that's something that we maintain going forward. A lot of times in loss, people try to... Instead of improving themselves, they try to weaken the enemy, and I think that's a mistake. But let me ask you: try this. to improve yourself, be, get, become better at what you're doing, whether it's your messaging, or maybe flesh out your ideology better, maybe find better candidates, well, whatever the fuck it is. But don't try to talk. Don't spend the next four years talking about how bad Democrats are. Yeah, Start, don't do it. Like make Republicans better if that's your goal. Yep. And talk about how much better you're becoming. Well, I don't wrap, get negative. I, I want to come back on this because I, I, I don't want to, like, I'm, I'm still trying to gather my thoughts at just the idea of, mm. I mean, not, I, I think it's terrible. Like, obviously, I think we should do anything to help someone be able to exercise their right to vote. But if someone isn't going to take the time to go get an ID right, or try to find assistance with helping vote, why do we think we, they've educated themselves on the person that they're going to vote? Yeah, but I mean, it's America, right? Well, we consider the voter right. Well, I don't know if that's the right answer. Gotcha. To be honest. Well, I, I definitely think the percentage is so, the margin is so small mm. uh, in the 20th century yep. that I don't think that it's a, um, I don't think that it's a, I think it's a level. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's going to be a big factor. Uh, probably not. No, we'll see. We'll see in 2022. I think some of my friends said no factor. Yeah. We'll see how big the uh, swing back is in 2022. I think it'll be pretty heavy. Um, but that's how American politics go, unfortunately, until we get something better in. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Well, this is episode seven mm-hmm. of the American Party Podcast. Mm-hmm.